<laughs> All right, hey guys, how are you going? Um, today I'm really excited to be joined by Julia Chai. Uh, she is um, my, my Qigong teacher and a chi Qigong teacher in general. <laughs> um, and I will just, um, first, first of all, I'll just hand over to Julia so she can tell you a little bit about what she does for a living. Hi, <laughs> thanks for joining us here in the beautiful Botanical Gardens. Basically when I have spare time I come out here and I practice my moves here. So I do teach Qigong and Tai Chi, I also do a bit of hypnosis and past life regressions. But generally I love energy, I feel energy and I learn it from energy. And that's just not, not just um, our soul stuff but also what's embodied around us. So today I, I've been showing Sarah some of the plants that have been catching my interest so I thought I'd just take you through some of the insights that I've had just looking at the plants and um, how they feel, how they've grown, what we can learn from them just by studying them. Okay, beautiful, sounds great. All right, so what we'll probably do is I'll just um, position the camera on yeah. the plants, yeah. probably yeah. easier, so yeah. that you guys can see what we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> and then you can just hear us <laughs> yeah. and relate to what it is we're talking about. Absolutely. Because there's a big fence. Yeah. It's going to be a bit hard to go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Can't jump over that. So here I was looking at the beautiful round uh, petal, sorry, the leaf with the center. And um, I've been doing a breathing workshop recently and been introducing people to their diaphragm, which actually has that shape, but the other way around. And just like this leaf, which has a stem, big fat base stem coming through from which all the um, arteries or, or the, the, the leaf vessels, the veins kind of move out from the diaphragm also has actually a tube coming through from the heart which then passes through the diaphragm and then goes on to the belly but um, with this leaf you know I'll often be drawn to one point sort of in this case obviously that center where that stem attaches and then just observe and just be interested in how how things then spread out from there and you might be able to see the pattern if you look at it from the top looks a bit like a neuron actually from the brain neuron and then you mm. see sort of see the bits branching out um, at different intervals all the way through to the outside and um, when we're looking at this kind of thing do remember that um, the way that we perceive things is actually to connect to the frequencies or vibrations vibrations or oscillations or patterns you hear the helicopter that's one frequency <laughs> you hear the building noise that's one frequency yeah. but there's also the visual the visual your mo the molecules in your eyes are bouncing at a rate that is caused by them bouncing onto that leaf and then back so within your brain actually a holographic image of this leaf is being set up just through that process of that those light molecules bouncing off that leaf and into yours and within yourself there will be that image and I often find when I'm looking at different plants that different parts of me that respond to the beautiful algebra or geometry that's being used by these cells and by the life force to create this physical network that sometimes or often that will actually respond to a part of your body and a different part of your body will actually recognize that shape recognize that structure within you you know we have the heart and the blood vessels sending the blood out all the way all the way all the way through to every organ maybe those are the middle intersections then out to the senses sensing and the extremities and then even out to the skin and um, when we're hot the veins come up when we're cooler they sort of shrink back in so this going out and coming back in is something that happens within us and equally the diaphragm actually moves up and moves down sort of kind of domes up and moves down and here you've got that sort of slight dome dome shape as well so just looking at it can be very centering and can help you connect to whatever part in your body kind of has that mathematical pattern and is it Which is, is it also converted. talking to a specific part of your body that perhaps needs healing from 
yes this the, particular yes, pattern yes you'll be drawn to that so today you know this is not the first time we've been here but today last time we looked at the cacti on the yes. side <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which will show show you show your little audience but today we we're only working on the other side and that was just yeah we just got drawn to that so energy will always go wherever it needs to go it's a bit like osmosis you mm. know so you will find yourself being drawn to the plants that have that energy or information or scent or whatever it is that you're short of you'll always be attracted mm. to the plants and, and i like what you were telling me before here. about how um plants have such a, a pure pattern mm. it's an undisturbed pattern yeah you know yeah. and so it's like uh our bodies sometimes can get a bit confused perhaps by interfering energies That's right. or, or blockages thoughts or emotions or, yeah, yeah whereas with the like plants that. they just hold the pure one and actually if we have a look at that cactus that kind of is a is a pretty clear um, yeah. pattern so we might go and have yeah a look we at might that, go and have a look yeah. at that okay okay so here are the cacti we were just talking about and you can actually see the patterns there can't you you can yeah. see with these ones with the pink flowers you can see like in the sunflower that beautiful that beautiful beautiful spiral fibonacci sequence coming out from the center and um yeah in the often talk about the natural order in 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 Taoism and, and qigong that when you align with the natural order you come back into perfection and then we'll often we'll wonder well what is the natural order and by hanging around plants you can definitely start to understand a bit more about the natural order yeah and you do just feel by tuning into specific plants you you just become calmer and more centered yeah yeah you, you instantly feel Absolutely. that connection of peace yeah. and well-being yeah and just, and lo love and support i guess yeah, as well yeah, absolutely and just that yeah just that harmony mm. and just looking at that pattern it's my body's yeah just sort of harmonizing internally to that pattern and that symbol as well yeah. and then if you look over at the little ones over there the noctocactus magnificus you know, just those beautiful little star flower shapes right at the top reminds you kind of of the, you know, it's the sort of star, star, when we look at starfish. And I think we were commenting last opening. time about this as well, you know, cactuses yeah. actually have a feeling of being under the water, you know, they have that yeah, kind of do, like, they, they always have that connection yeah. Yeah. to being under the water, yeah. even though they're quite often in the driest places on earth. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah they do, they, even though they're kind of, again, even though they're spiky, masculine, these ones are very feminine actually, apart from that one there. <laughs> <laughs> The one with the big crown. <laughs> that was the big crown. Yeah. And then the thorns outside. But if you sort of go go past the thorns into into the base, if you sort of set yourself into the center of that cacti, if you look beyond the thorns, you would experience something different. And I think that even just knowing that there's so much moisture and and mm. um, I guess softness on the inside. You know, yeah. it's not all the prickly exterior, no, exactly. which is a very protective feeling yeah. too. Yeah. So there's a lesson in us as well. Yeah. And I think it was you, Sarah, who told me the interesting thing about the bougainvillea. Oh yeah. That when you, when you, if, yeah. you, if you plant it and you've never cut it, it doesn't have thorns, right? Yes, that's right. So that's um, yeah. That's um, obviously the cacti. If it never gets nibbled by camels, it probably wouldn't have thorns either. Yeah. And and I and I know for a fact that there are some people that if you if you meditate on a cactus uh kind of every day and show it your loving emotion the spikes come down in okay, size yeah so they do yeah. actually reduce in yeah. size so and there's that interactive yeah there, and that's so you know, that huge exchange of energy yeah. exchange of love yeah and, so yeah. plants respond to their environment as do humans there's yeah. that big you know how much do we are we formed by the environment mm. um but then you know, we can we can choose to look beyond the spikes of our partner, our kids, <laughs> <laughs> of our parents, <laughs> and just focus on the center. All right, I think that was a good note. Okay. <laughs> um, obviously, we were talking and pointing, but when I'm in nature, I'll, I'll often actually just sort of use my hands to trace trace the lines, and that just helps me get a better feel of how how the energy is running and just sort of learn what's happening. So we're going to look at these spiky ones here at the moment. Got these very delicate, spiky bits, 
and um, yeah, and it talks to you, it feels like it's just kind of like twinkles, it's all just scattering, mm. that beautiful bit like, and from the top they actually look like neurons that are sort of, you know, just firing and so the energy of these is actually quite different from these ones, which is a gentler and stronger. And these are sort of more spiraling around. But even just observing these, connecting with them, the way that they, they interact and they grow outward. Mm -hmm. they, uh, these would be the extroverts, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shooting energy out constantly. Yeah. Energy out everywhere. Like, here you go, here you go, here yeah. you go. And actually, yeah, so just like the neurons, but sort of just very fast. Probably not very stable, but <laughs> sort of very fast. So that was just beautiful. Yeah. Another way of interacting with the plants is just sort of feeling them. All right. Let's pop over. Jump back over the fence. All right. So here, look, we have some beautiful. Uh, I'm not even sure whether they're probably a type of begonia, but anyway, don't quote me on that. But they took my eye because of the beautiful pink. I was drawn to the pink. And the petals are just really cute, very feminine. And then you've got these really strong stalks, which are a bit spiky underneath, which is like sort of the masculine part of the stem or the young the strong part of the stem and the flowers and even as we're talking they're waving a little in the wind the wind's moving around them in the field and underneath you've got the leaves so what what i'll often do is with plants i'll basically just really study them the Taoist always says that you can all get all of the answers to your questions the questions of humans and nature so i'll often sort of just focus maybe if i was the plant if i was a little sprout trying to grow into that full-grown plant what would the path be that I would be taking so starting from the ground I'd basically just sort of hang out at the base of the stem of one of those um, beautiful flower stems and just sort of experience as I sort of draw my attention or just sort of be at the base and just sort of experience the energy of that a bit like when you go to listen to a concert and you just listen and experience so just connecting at that point and then just sort of experience the quality of that base stem which is very sort of strong and structured and often I'll sort of just move along that stem first and see whether the top or the bottom feels any different front and back and the sides and then I'll kind of widen out as I widen out I actually sort of feel that whereas the stem was kind of pushing up do we pause? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just push on through, it'll be we'll fine. We'll just push on through, okay. <laughs> so we'll just wait just, for a minute yeah. here. Yeah. Wait for a okay. So the stem itself, and we can see it, is, you know, the water is rising up, feeding and creating the base for the petals. So actually when you widen out, it's a bit like when you watch negative, you get negative uh, films, or when you do moulding, mm -hmm. you actually feel that the energy around the stem is going in a different direction from the stem itself, more anchoring on, on a wider scale. It's almost spiralling that energy that's around it. Yeah, yeah. And energy spirals through us as well. Yeah. And, you know, depending on whether we move clockwise or anti-clockwise, mm -hmm. we get a vortex or we get a tornado. And that basically shows you how the ups and how materials move up, physically are moved up through, the, through that plant up to the petals mm. and then like even in our body how the toxins would then sort of be taken down all the way back into the earth mm -hmm. so yeah so this is a beautiful just example of the yin and the yang and then sort of um, you know, the contrast and um, in one plant mm -hmm. the masculine and the feminine yeah beautiful <laughs> all right well thank you so much for being here with us guys um and thank you julia for all your amazing insights i'm always blown away by the way that you think and your perspective on life and energy so thank you it's been amazing um and i hope that you guys have enjoyed it and maybe got something out of it too <laughs> all right have a great day guys we'll see you have later a great day. bye bye